nice bounce about him every now and again. He has a little jig jog showing his, uh, his enthusiasm and looks really well in himself. He's very much well handicapped on his uh, 2023 form and I think he's in down in grade after finishing sixth in the Carlisle Bell. Yeah, he looks really well. Let's take a step back or pick up 11 streak lightning for Ruth Carr and Joanna Mason. Yeah, he's well handicapped on his uh, form from 2023. Um, he hasn't been beaten all that far this year. Uh, interesting, they've got the, the cheap pieces on him today for the first time, which uh, you know seem to be doing the trick in the prelims. He's walking around there quite sharply. OK, we'll pick up 10 behind. That is uh, Vince Le Prince, who's up two pound for his success at Leicester last time out. That was his third success in total. As you said, not gone up all that much for it and was interesting. Fabian Manman's comments on him saying that he's still learning his job and he's quite raw. As you can see, he's uh, he's quite an anxious type in the prelims. He's getting quite warm, wants to get on with things. Uh, but there's still, he still may well be progressing, this, this horse. OK, number one in behind, Autumn Festival. He's well enough treated in all form and trained by David Amara, but well held... Um, last few starts. Yeah, exactly. He's going to need to step up on what he's been showing. Whether they drop back down to seven furlongs, having Danny Tudd open the saddle will help make a change of things. He was third in the Thirst Cunt Cup, so he's got some bits of form here. And he obviously won eight times for David O'Mara, so he does need to step up on what he's done, but he does look, he looks okay in the prelims. I can't really fault him. He's okay. got a nice Bell's, march on him. Bell signs. We'll just quickly look at a couple uh, of Michael Dodds' stop. Uh, Number four, a bruiser Mia, back to seven furlongs today. Yeah, I think that'll be a real positive. He was quite keen over eight furlongs uh, last time out. Um, he's not won on turf since he was a five-year-old back in 2020. Um, so I think the fact that he's dropping down to seven furlongs, hopefully he'll kind of see him kind of get back to some kind of form. Five animate. Up to for Catrick. Still well enough treated in all form when trained by the Chrisfords. Yep, been, he was obviously rated a, a lot higher. Made the most, I suppose, being £10 below his last win mark that day. Um, and I think that was over six furlongs uh, in a strong run race. So he stays a little bit further. He has one over seven as well. Another bar is another horse who, like several of these here, is getting well enough treated and on all form, but need, does need to bounce back for Adrian Keatley and Ocean McSweeney. Yeah, um, his best form as well has probably been over five and six furlongs, so um, not quite sure on the seven furlongs today, but he looks well. Uh, can't fault him as he walks round. He looks good in himself. He's nice and relaxed. He hasn't turned a hair. OK, Shelley went down to the start, and early down to the start was Platinum Girl. We'll pick them two up down at the start shortly. Yeah, this is the 352, the download, the Vickers Dot Bear app handicap. Seven furlongs they have to run over here, and uh, we have got a, a good field lining up for this, and some horses arriving in good form, not least Vince Le Prince, who we did see in the preliminaries was getting a little bit anxious, but this was him winning for the third occasion at uh, Leicester earlier in the month. He was ridden by fame at Menem in this day. He was a 16 to 1 shout. He'd run a couple of races before this, this season. Uh, mixed bunch, his opening run better than his second run at Beverly, but he was uh, really just sort of cajoled along throughout by fame at Menemum, and he really got into a, a winning game spirit in the tail end of the race, and as we'll see at this stage, his chances don't look as likely, but he was able to come home quite strongly, and he won a shade cosily in the end. Uh, this horse was able to pick up. I don't know if they kind of fell, of an, fell in a bit of a heap at the end of the race, but it probably have to be a bit more on the up today to defy to £2 rise in the weights. He is 11 to 2. Uh, Chalet is uh, 92 ahead of him. On a session is also 11 to 2. Look really well in the paddock. That horse, we've got uh, Just Call Me Pete at 15 to 2. Autumn Festival, 17 to 2 as a street lightning. Uh, Bruzo Mia is nine to one. Orbital Chime is nines. Fourteen to one for Animate Platinum Girl. Twenty-two to one. Uh, Magical Max is twenty-five to one, and another bar is twenty-eight to one. So Chalet at the top of the betting for Michael Dodds and uh, leads the way. But an open enough looking to this handicap as we go back to Nal Nadal.
Thanks, yes, and there is Shelley uh, down at the start. Callum Rodriguez has been placed on a few times, including at this track. Interesting, the money's come from me, 92 clear favourite. He was a lot bigger last night. Yeah, I mean, he's proven he, to be useful on his day, Shelley. I know he's not won for a while, but um, he looks well handicapped, obviously, based on some of his back form. But he does need everything to fall right for him. I presume he'll be ridden bang up there with the, with the pace. Callum Rodriguez has won on him before, so he knows him well. Uh, I know Connor's ridden him quite a bit recently, but Callum does know him and he does know how to ride him. But he's not all that straightforward. He does like to get a nice, easy lead out in front. He's seven pounds below that last one he marks. He's, he's well treated. If he can bounce back, the Kamali's suggesting he can. The other one with a white cap. Uh, of the reality partnerships is Platinum Girl. She's back from 312 days off the track. She went down the start a few minutes before the rest. Yeah, she looked like she was. She looked like she was okay to start off. I do think she'll come on for the run. Uh, she did win, obviously, a couple of handicaps last year. The trip looks fine. Condition looks fine. Um, she's obviously a pound above that last win mark. Um, but she was second on her seasonal return last year. I just thought she may probably want a bit more of a um, a tester, a testing track, should we say? And uh, she looked okay to start. I just think she will. She looks like she will come on for the run. She's quite busy. So she, m she might do her work if you know. Yeah, sometimes when they're like yeah. that, they kind of get themselves fit, don't they? Yeah, she's a half sister to Highway Grey. Um, Highway Grey loves to hear his hooves rattle, but she has won on the easy side of good. Sean Crown with feet out of the irons. And she will jump out of stall four for Timmy Speed. Took this race 12 months ago with Danzan. And doubly represented this time around with Platinum Girl and Vince Le Prince. He's up that two pound for Leicester last time out. And you, you go down through Street Lightning first time. Cheek pieces. Autumn Festival well treated. On a session well treated. Charlie well treated. The well treated are becoming disappointing. It's one of the two, isn't it? Yeah. There's um, a couple of them now that just. You know they're showing signs that they're very well handicapped, and if they can bring back any of their their form from the last couple of years, they should be able to win this. I thought on a session looked the best I've seen him for, for for a while. I thought he looked really really well today. He looked great in his coat, having a little bit of bounce around the the parade ring, kind of showing that he's really up for it today. I didn't think he ran all that bad at Carlisle last time out on a on a stiff mile. Um, drop back down to seven furlongs will, will suit him obviously um, at Carlisle it was a, a what a not to 85 it's a little bit deeper contest to what this is today but I thought he looked I did think he looked well today the one who's less exposed to most these is orbital chime for James Horton and PJ McDonald teaming up again here and this horse is he's only had nine career starts one and all whether eight and turf and one start back from a a layoff again. It, it looks like the gaps. He's, he's never been the easiest to train, but look well in the paddock. And I think that was a stronger race than Hayder last time out, where he's beat just over five lengths. Yeah, I mean, he won last year at Redcar on heavy ground. That was a mark of 73. He didn't really build on it all that well, but he has. He's obviously starting to make his way back down the the weights now off a mark of 75 and. He'll take a big step forward for being off the track for 294 days and he was gelded through the winter as well. So it'll just take him a little while to feel the, the full effects of that. But I think once they're gelded, they kind of start to tighten up a, a little bit more. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't put anyone off him at all. Money coming for Autumn Festival, who last 10th of 12th last time out. The ultimate start, 8th of 8th at Chester, Epsom 13th of 15th. Albeit in different company, new every time before 12th of 12. So, since that run in the, the Thirst Con Cup, he has been well held. He's a pound higher than his last win as well. Yeah, I mean, I think Danny being back on board is obviously a good thing. He knows that horse very, very well. And he just never really built on that third, as you said, on his stable debut when he was third in the. In the Thirst Hunt Cup, I mean, he was well beaten after that at Newbury. He was beaten 40 lengths, albeit, you know, the Class 2 race um, a couple of times in Class 2 contests and Class 3. So a very slight ease in grade, I suppose, and to what he's running today. I think the step back down to seven furlongs will be a real, a real positive for him. He looks OK in the prelims. He never really kind of is a real 
knockout looker anyway. He's quite plain when you look at him, but he looked he looked good enough in his coat and everything. Um, at the prices, you I wouldn't put anyone off having an each way bet on him. Okay. As they continue to go forward. Platinum Girl goes into stall four. And then Shally. So not that many left to go for this turn. The bigger stop bet at handicap over seven furlongs. Competitive little heat as we head back up to Malcolm and get the call. Yeah, thanks very much, Nala. But so Mio are out of line. So too Vince Le Prince. And I think the other one's Animate. So just waiting for three here. In fact, Vince Le Prince has gone forward to the far side. Brutso Mio coming in near side. Just waiting for Animate, I think, to complete the lineup. That one's walked in. We are ready to go here. Set. They're off. Racing over seven furlongs. The Grey Horse, Magical Max, missed the kick. In the download, the Vickers.bet app, Handicap Stakes. Good start by uh, Platinum Girl in the yellow jacket, red disc, white cap, and prominent deep route in the same colours, but with a red cap is Vince Le Prince. Between horses with the white face is Orbital Chime, and then further towards the inside, Abruzzo Mio, red cap and nose banded. Out wide, Platinum Girl in the black and pink. Just Call Me Pete tucks in behind them with Chalet centre pack in a green jacket. On the inside of that one is on a session. Animate towards the back of the field with another bar. Streak Lightning is second last, and Magical Max is at the back of the 12 runner field, and 10 to 12 off the leader, which continues to be Platinum Girl and Sean Kiran. They're past halfway and approaching the home straight, heading down towards the final three furlongs. Platinum Girl off the front by a length and a half to Vince Le Prince, racing second. A couple of lengths to Abruzzo Mio, racing third. And then Autumn Festival towards the near side on a session is right there. So to Orbital Chime with a white face. Abruzzo Mio towards the right. Chalet just behind them in the green jacket, brown cap, trying to pick up. Down the straight they come, back inside the final two furlongs. Platinum Girl trying to fend them off from the front here. Vince Le Prince, Orbital Chime towards the near side of Bruzzo Mir on the far side, not many have got into it, Chalet is still trying to pick up behind the pace, inside the furlong now, Platinum Girl still there by three parts of a length, over on the far side of Bruzzo Mio, Chalet trying to dart between horses, they race up towards the line, Platinum Girl, Abruzzo Mio Abruzzo Mio's nail, Platinum Girl tight behind Chalet on the far side Vince Le Prince between horses, near side Orbital Charm, then on a session behind those from Streak Lightning and another bar it's a 1-3 uh, for Michael Dodds. Uh, Bruce O'Mia just holding on the far side for Michael Dodds and Connor Beasley. Uh, Beats in second place, number 12. Uh, Platinum Girl for Timmy Smith, Sean Cran. ship really nice in her first start uh, back from a layoff. It's officially a full for third, but it did look like Shelley possibly just had got that position. We'll confirm it in due course, but no doubt about the winner. Uh, Bruce O'Mia. Yeah, he'd um, ran really well at Doncaster um, over a mile and the step back down to seven furlongs has um, certainly suited him and to be fair to him once connor kind of asked him to to go and win his race he did because she took a little bit of catching in the end platinum platinum girl she obviously was making her seasonal return and sean Caran was straight out in the front on her and he, he once he come around that home bet home turn he kicked and she they went quite clear in at one point and she took a little bit of catching in the end but um, you can see why they, they do try and run him over eight furlongs of, of Bruzo Mia because he does look like he stays a little bit further. Just